The Delaware and Hudson, also known as the DNH, is a 22.3 mile long rail trail comprised of two sections, stretching between Rupert and Castleton, Vermont, with segments reaching into neighboring New York State. The first of a handful of parking areas is along Crossroad in West Rupert, Vermont. Follow it down a quarter of a mile to the trail where you'll find a few spots. From here you can go southwest to the New York State Line or northeast towards the main trail. The trail travels one and a half miles up to the next parking area. Immediately off of Hebron Road in West Rupert is the second parking area. This is a larger area with room for at least half a dozen cars. From here, the trail continues northeast through Rupert, bordering farmlands and small towns. You'll also come across one of the original station houses. Now the trail does continue along through here, but it does cross over someone's property, so just be courteous of them as you head through. Some more shots just for the randomness of it. Showing that the old trail... Oh, look at that! An old rail spike. It's always funny to me that even though they've come through, torn up the old line, probably graded it numerous times, there always seems to be one or two pieces left. As the trail continues, it crosses Route 153 several times, so just be aware of traffic as you go along. As you're hiking the lower section, you'll come across several areas with road closed signs. Parts of the trail were washed out when Tropical Storm Irene came through in August of 2011 and are now unsafe for snowmobiling or horseback riding. So the further along I get, the more I start to realize that most of the bridges along this trail have road closed signs in front of them. And if you follow, there's a little side trail down next to the bridge that leads down to the water below. You will look across and realize why. At least this bridge is also closed because of some significant damage. And even though there aren't a lot of official parking areas along the trail, there are plenty of spots where it crosses over roads or next to the road where you can have somebody either drop you off or pick you up if you're wanting to make a long hike or a long bike ride out of the day. Come on, Aries. We're not going down the road. You're funny. That little girl thought we were going down the road, but it's just a place where it crosses over. From the parking area off of Hebron Road, the trail travels about seven and a half miles up to West Paulette. Right as you arrive at West Paulette, you will find yourself on a bridge, one of the few bridges on this segment that's still open. You can see Aries down there enjoying the walk across. And right on the other side of the bridge, you will come to an intersection where Route 153 North and South meet. And this is the intersection where you will find the next parking area. Right in the middle of West Paulette, you'll find a small dirt parking lot where the station house used to be. From West Paulette, the trail touches into New York State, travels another mile, and then crosses again into New York State before arriving at the next parking area on Andrews Lane in South Granville, New York. After traveling another one and a half miles, you will enter Granville. When you first get into Granville, you'll walk through an industrial area. You then enter the town itself. As you continue through Granville, you will come to the Matawi River, and you will notice on your left, there is a deck area that you can go out onto and either chill out and relax on any of the benches along here, or go and have a sweet little overview of the pedestrian bridge that crosses where the railroad used to. You can see the old original stone abutment there and there, and you can overlook an area that used to hold a dam. And then you continue your way across the pedestrian bridge. It also offers some nice views. On the other side of the bridge, there are several parking areas. One right next to the bridge on Water Street, or in a public parking area right off of Main Street, which is next to the trail and the station house bed and breakfast. This section of the trail continues another half mile before ending. The trail then breaks for about five miles before continuing in the upper section. The first area to park for the upper section is off of Bentley Avenue in Pulteney, Vermont. 
From here, one can begin following the trail towards Castleton, or backtrack two and a half miles to the true start of this section. If you're heading northeast towards Castleton, there are several other parking options in Pulteney, including three-hour parking on Main Street, and a few parking spaces right off of Church Street at Ideal Way over the original through track. As you start out from Pulteney, you will go through Depot Park, which is right next to another old rail station. From Pulteney, the trail cuts through fields, woods, and over old road crossings as it heads towards Castleton. To many locals, this railroad was known as the Slate Picker. And as you're hiking along, you undoubtedly find reasons why you would believe that. As you get to the northern part of the trail, you will start seeing distinct signs of civilization, including cars all over the place and buildings. What's up with this? Well, you have arrived at Castleton. At the northernmost section of this trail is Castleton State College. Here you'll find a large lot along South Street that's open to public parking. Follow the sidewalk towards campus and you'll be on the trail. You can either head south to the main trail or follow the old line straight through the campus about three quarters of a mile to the end at Route 4A. And while there's other parking areas along the way, most are permit only lots. It's kind of funny to think that as recently as the late 80s there was an active railroad that crossed along this campus. The rails still embedded into the road give tribute to this fact. They also point you to where the trail continues. So from the Castleton State College campus, you can continue a little ways north. You just have to cut through the parking lots and find the trailhead on the northern part of the campus. And now we have arrived. Where the trail hits the main street in Castleton is the official end of the rail trail. So whether it's walking, running, biking, horseback riding, or snowmobiling, cross-country skiing, or snowshoeing, the DNH offers long, smooth trails for your enjoyment.